precious metals have been some of the best investments of this century. Yeah. And I just don't understand why such a small percent, why, why 71% of all the precious metals, all the investors in the U.S. don't have any exposure whatsoever, when it is not only the best performing asset of this century so far, but it's also the insurance that every, you know, is, nobody has an insurance policy. Uh, it's crazy. And, you know, from my perspective, nobody has an insurance po policy, and it seems like the house is on fire right now. Hi, I want to welcome everybody to part number three of Ronnie Stoferle's great presentation on The Showdown. So, Ronnie, how are you doing? Very good, Mike. Always good to see you. It's great seeing you. So, in part three here, uh, this starts out with uh, performance since 2000 in various currencies. Uh, we've seen this chart before, but it's yeah. always important to revisit this chart and look at the green <laughs> versus the red. I mean, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, in most currencies, it, it's the only the U.S. dollar where you have so many uh, red years yeah. all around the world. I mean, you look at the average, there were only three years with drops there. It's amazing. So tell us about it. Well, as you know, it's 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 just one of my favorite charts because, you know, there's all the information on, on one table. And, and so many people say, well, you know, gold hasn't really performed well. Just look at this table. And actually, right. um, we, we, we showed that on, on 15th of November at, this, at, the, at the conference. Since then, actually, it even got better. But I think, you know, we've got a, a keg or a compound annual growth rate in dollar terms of 8.4% since the year 2000. Um, yeah. Then in, in, in Japanese yen terms, you know, look at the performance yeah. year to date. It's 24%. I, I mean, the Japanese yen used to be, you know, one of the most important currencies out there. 24% in one year. That's yeah. you know that's that's that that that's quite a devaluation against gold and and there was a great quote by by my friend uh, Shane McGuire he's he's a very very influential uh, um, uh, institutional investor uh, at the um, at the teacher retirement system of Texas he said I don't think the question really is what is gold worth but what are currencies not worth and as you can see on this chart they're actually not worth too much and and i think that um if if you have a look at this chart you know you can see that in the in the in the, in the years you know starting in 2002 actually the momentum was was even more dramatic than we're seeing at the moment so perhaps yeah. the best is yet to come so oh, we yeah, had like a couple of yeah. years with 20 even 30 percent performance in the yeah. year so that might be you know in the future I've got two things to add. My friend David Morgan, uh, you know, silver, it, it's the morganreport.com. Uh, he uh, is, always says 80% of the move comes in the last 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. But if you take this chart and you want it, 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 it we shouldn't be, you said we shouldn't be asking, uh, uh, you know, how is gold's performance? It's, it's what is the, what are the currencies doing? All you have to do is, in your mind, change all the green to red and the red to green, and that's what the currencies are doing. Yeah, yeah. This is a, an average loss in purchasing power of all of these currencies. And you look at that last column, and it's devastating what is happening to all of the currencies. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is an amazing chart. And, and you know, <clears throat> I stopped doing all uh interviews and uh videos with uh other people and live appearances in 2018 so that i could knuckle down and write my book mm -hmm. and uh i the the first um uh live appearance that i went to after that was rebel capitalist live uh with george gammon and i took along a tube of gold eagles so it's 20 ounces of gold and I passed it around and I let everybody in the audience hold it. And some people opened it and look at them. And there was, a, I don't know, 400 people there or something like that. So they all got a chance to hold that tube. I bought that tube in uh, 2002 for $6,000. And it's over 40 today. It's about $42,000 for that same 
tube that I bought for six. And that chart that we were just looking at uh, shows the performance of that tube of gold eagles that I bought in late 2002. Those numbers were very real for me. I outperformed the stock market by a long shot. And uh, people think that gold is some crazy investment where precious metals have been some of the best investments of this century. Yeah. And I just don't understand why such a small percent, why, why 71% of all the precious metals, all investors in the U.S. don't have any exposure whatsoever when it is not only the best performing asset of this century so far, but it's also the insurance that every, you know, it's, nobody has an insurance policy. Uh, it's crazy. And, you know, from my perspective, nobody has an insurance po policy and it seems like the house is on fire right now. <laughs> so uh, what's this chart? And that's, that, that basically fits perfectly to, to, to what you just said. Um, Mike, you know that, that I think that, you know, especially uh, you know the 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 retail demand uh in in, in emerging markets and, and 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 also over here in europe especially in, in in germany is very much physical demand but then there's also western financial investors and they yeah. primarily buy the gold etfs so right. so the gold the inflows and outflows into the etf space are from my point of view a, a very good um, sign for the sentiment that Western financial investors have. And I think it's, it's, it's fascinating. Actually, we've seen six consecutive quarters of outflows. In 2023, we saw outflows of more than 200 tons of gold. And it's also interesting. There's a huge discrepancy between the East and the West again. So European and North American investors have sold more than 200 tons. And then on the other hand, Asian ETFs actually show inflows so this is kind of telling uh me what we discussed before that you know there's um, asian and emerging markets investors appreciate gold much much more than we do in the yes. western world now you know just as late in the 1990s tech bubble you know the, the dot-com boom i think that the tech stocks ai and you name it they have captured all the attention of Western financial investors. But at some point, this will be changing. And I think that as soon as we see new all-time highs, also in US dollar terms in the price of gold, then I think this FOMO will kick in. And if you have a look at this, uh, at the chart, like 2004 until 2011, 2012, actually we, we saw inflows into ETFs over all those quarters. So, so I think this will be a very important uh, yeah. additional driver for the gold market going forward. Yeah, I want to point out something for the viewers here. Uh, you know, when we had the inflows uh, from 2005, roughly on this chart, late 2004, uh, all the way up, you know, the gold price ri normally rises on the inflows. And then you had those big outflows in uh, 2013 and uh, early 2014 and the gold price fell. Yeah. And, uh, but the gold price isn't falling now. We've had out, big outflows and the gold price is just going sideways and bumping up, bumping its head up. I mean, it's up above 2000. Uh, and uh, so the strength that the gold price is showing in the face of these outflows. And I just wonder what Western investors could be thinking. Also that all these Western investors, you know, you're tracking ETF inflows and outflows, they're being fooled into accepting. Uh, I, it's basically an IOU for gold. It's not real gold. It's it's a share in a trust uh, that uh, is supposed to be backed by holdings of gold. And so <laughs> it's. And then the very fact that you can uh, short the ETFs uh, when somebody shorts uh, something, the broker will borrow shares out of anybody that has a margined trading account. They can borrow your shares, your long GLD, say. So you've got so many shares. The brokerage house comes and they borrow some of them and they loan them to somebody else at, you know, at interest. So the brokerage company is making a profit and that other person sells them into the market. 
Now you think you own those ounces and so does somebody else. There's two people owning the same ounce. Uh, it is another fractional reserve scheme in a game of musical chairs. Uh, and so, I mean, I stay as far away from these things as I can. I, I just really like physical gold and silver. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel, please consider my company, goldsilver.com, the next time you buy precious metals. We're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your dealer. And now back to the video. Uh, so uh, any other comments on this chart and how it sort of reveals what's going on with the public? No, I, I think it's, it's just, it's just, you know, makes me pretty relaxed about the price of gold um, that, that actually we're trading so close to new all time highs. And uh -huh. still people couldn't care less about it. And, you know, Western yeah. financial investors are actually selling it. And I think that's that that shows me there's enormous Im amount of potential for further purchases. Yeah. And and, you, and, and actually, you know, every new all time high should be bought, you know, um, because that's actually the, the way when there is no resistances anymore. And I think exactly. you know, we, Once we, it passes this resistance, we're in, we're in for a slingshot yes, move. I think exactly. it's going to be something big, and it's going to be something powerful. Uh, so the next chart, uh, mind the gap. Uh, this uh, is, I, I suppose, revealing. Tell me what this is and what it means to you. Yeah, that that's one of my favorite charts, Mike. It it, it shows the. The, the tips or the uh, um, um, the inflation protected bonds um, and the price of gold um, and the tips they're um, they're inverted um, to to um, to make the case better vi visually. But what you can see on this chart, there always has been a very very tight correlation between the ten year tips and the price of gold. So so um, I think an it amazing would correlation. I, this ninety percent. It's over but, 90%. But this is something like look at this divergence now. Um, it it yeah. has completely broken down. So real yields actually, uh, they have moved up by, by roughly 350 basis points in the last 18 months. So actually, according, let's say, to, to the old gold market playbook, given where real rates, intre real interest rates are, the price of gold should be hundreds of dollars lower, but it is not. So, so I think if, you, if we look at the time when the gap started to widen, it actually started with the Ukraine war, which led to these uh, high purchases of, of emerging uh, markets, uh, central banks. But I think it's also telling us that the market doesn't really believe in the official inflation numbers. Um, and I think it's all also telling us that Perhaps there's some 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 evidence for de-dollarization or de-euroization, but it is probably not going into the renminbi or the rupees, but rather into gold. And I think therefore this is a very very powerful uh, chart that we're that we're showing here. Wow, uh, that is that's uh, amazing. Uh, it's it's quite an insight that uh, you know it was such a uh, reliable, super high correlation uh, tracker of, uh, uh, you know, confirming that the gold price was pretty much where it should have been uh, yeah. in the economy. And then suddenly this huge divergence signaling that um, people aren't trusting the, uh, you know, what the central banks are doing, the numbers coming out of the government, uh, that this is the, the market is saying something different mm -hmm. than the government and the central banks are saying. So, uh, silver, tell us about yeah. that. I mean, you know, if you talk about silver, you also have to talk about, uh, if you talk about gold, you also have to talk about silver. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I like silver a lot, um, but it is like this, you know, wild and 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 unpredictable little brother or little cousin um uh, and and you can see on this chart actually how um 
how, how gold performs in gold bull markets and silver performs in silver bull market. And most of the times, um, they are basically, uh, uh, you know, similar time periods. And you can see on this yeah. chart, actually, you know, most of the time, silver tends to outperform the price of gold. So if you want to have more leverage um, um, uh, in the precious metal space, silver is, is probably a good idea. But as I've said previously, if we're expecting a, a recession, uh, uh, especially a hard landing, then it might be a little bit too early for, for silver yet, because um, silver obviously is not only um, a monetary metal, but also to some degree, roughly 50%, um, an industrial metal. And usually during recessions, this industrial demand tends to weaken and this affects the silver price. But I think, you know, uh, once gold really picks up momentum, at some point people will say, well, actually, I need a little bit more, you know, oomph, a little bit more uh, volatility, a little bit more momentum. And then I think people will start investing into the mining space, which obviously has a leverage on a, on a rising gold price. But also um, they will start investing in silver and silver mining equities. But as yeah. I've said, it's volatile. It's it's a little bit more risky, but it could get uh, really, really exciting in the silver space. My uh, basic plan that I started back in the, you know, in 2002 uh, was physical accumulation as my uh, base and my core position. And um, <clears throat> then uh, when I discovered silver in 2003 and I started developing a strategy and I sort of let the gold silver ratio dictate what I buy. If yep. it's very high and silver is undervalued compared to gold, I don't. It 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 has protected me a couple of times uh, from buying the wrong metal. There are times when I wanted to buy gold so bad, but silver was so undervalued compared to gold that I bought silver. I mean, during the COVID crash, uh, the ratio went to 120, so silver was only 120th yes. the value of gold each ounce, and I wanted to buy gold because when there's all of this crisis happening when there's this fear and pressure. You want to run toward gold, but uh, the gold silver ratio kept me from buying gold. And I bought only silver during that period of time. Conversely, back in 2011, yeah. when silver had been just on this big tear and uh, the ratio dropped to 30. So silver had uh, at that point uh, under 50. I think I was only buying gold at that point. Uh, so I, I sort of let the gold silver ratio uh, dictate uh, what I, I'm uh, doing. And you said something else here that I really mm -hmm. wanted to comment on, but I can't remember uh, what it was. Um, and uh, uh, the oh, hard landing. OK, uh, <clears throat> the industrial demand going away in a recession. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is absolutely true. So if we just have another garden variety recession, that will be fine. But the real yeah. driver for silver is going to be monetary demand one day. Yes. And if there is a currency, if, if the next big crisis is a hard landing and a recession, but then if it develops into a currency crisis, what you've got going on, uh, there will be less demand for industri industrial demand for silver. That will go away. And what is it? About 60% of all sil silver that's mined uh, ends up being used in, in, in industry. Is that about? Yeah. 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 Right. And so 60% of the demand vanishes. And so uh, that means the price could fall. Uh, and But most people don't realize that about 60% uh, of uh, silver supply comes as a byproduct from mining base metals. So if you're not building as many ho homes in China, you're not going to be using all of the copper uh, that, it, that is uh, used for wiring and plumbing. And silver was a byproduct of that and goes on to the market. It's a big, huge portion of the supply. So zinc for uh, castings for automotive, there's less cars being made uh, during a recession. And so all of this supply also goes away. And then you put a currency crisis when everybody wants it, when 60% of the supply has vanished. <laughs> and so uh, I truly see silver in triple digits uh, one day and probably 
not that far in the future. Now, I've been saying triple digits for a long time. The, the prediction of, uh, and I'm not actually making a prediction. This is the way I feel for me because I'm heavily invested in silver. So uh, I do believe that you're going to see supply because of that industrial demand. Yes, there will be less demand. And at first, the price of silver will fall uh, and potentially. Uh, but then in a crisis, especially, you know, in uh, 1971, gold was 35 and silver was a buck 67 or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But uh, uh, gold and silver took off in the 70s. But gold really outshined silver until gold got to about 400 bucks an ounce in late 1979. And, and at, that was the point in late 79 when it was the, the, that bull market was developing into a panic. And there were uh, lines around the block at coin shops all across North America. I don't know what was happening in Europe or not, but um, uh, it, it truly was developing into sort of a panic. And uh, uh, gold had been 35 bucks an ounce. Now, the average income in the United States was $10,000, a little under $10,000 in 1980. And so a guy goes into the bank and if he's, uh, you know, um, not a real high income earner and in his 50s or 60s, he goes into the bank, uh, pulls out 500 bucks because, you know, he only has a few thousand dollars in savings and uh, gets in line at a coin shop and he gets in there and he goes, I want to buy gold, too. They drop one coin in his hand and he goes, oh, is that all I can get? I remember it was 35 bucks. Now it's 400, just eight and a half years later. Yeah. And that's when that and and you know Jeff Christian uh, of uh, of um, CPM yeah CPM group um, confirmed this when I interviewed him back in 2005 or six that it was really it wasn't the Hunt brothers or some other factor it was really the public changing their preference from gold to silver because gold had already had such a run and it had already gotten so expensive and silver had sort of been left behind. And there isn't, there's no other commodity on earth that is selling at a discount to its 1980 price today. And silver yeah. still has not surpassed its 1980 high. So I just, I, I see this, I see demand going away. Um, uh, I'm sorry, supply going away when monetary demand picks up. It, it takes a currency crisis, a real, uh, you know, where people are seeking the safe haven of the the met two metals that have been money for thousands of years. You know, this is uh, so anyway, uh, is there is this the last chart in this series? I think there's one more, right? OK. Oh, yes. Yeah. So tell us about this one. Yeah, that's that's actually one of my very favorite ones, because, you know, Mike, I think we 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 both agree that a, a chart should be understood very quickly. Um, and I think the message of, of, of this chart is very simple. So once the Federal Reserve hits the pause button, usually it, re it leads to rate cuts. So, you know, uh, we, we have seen only very, very few instances right. where they hit the pause button and then actually started raising interest rates later on again. So from my point of view, it's, 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 it's crystal clear interest rates will fall, they have to fall. And I think that the price of gold is anticipating those rates cuts. It's as easy as that, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Now, we analyzed what gold actually did in the last three previous instances um, when the Fed started pausing interest rate uh, um, um, campaigns. And actually, it, you know, it shows that gold did tremendously well. Gold was up 66%. Then afterwards, 189% and then 50% plus. So actually, this tells me that now, you know, we're starting at roughly 2000 um, at interest rates level that yeah. will probably go down significantly over the next couple of years. So this tells me the best is yet to come for gold. Yes. Uh, so for everybody, you know, the red circles is where they pause the interest rates and then that green area is the gold rise before gold sort of peters out and goes sideways for a while or falls. So uh, the green area is, and we've 
<laughs> the best is yet to come. I mean, uh, we just started this next big up leg in gold, according to this chart. The uh, rate pause is the trigger. And then shortly thereafter, uh, gold starts its big rise. I want to thank you very much, Ronnie, for presenting all of this. This was a great presentation that you put together. And I want to remind everybody to go to ingoldwetrust.report and download uh, Incrementum AG's the In Gold We Trust Report, uh, which has an accompanying chart book. And you, the, you've got two versions of it, right? You've got the full version and then sort of a, a uh, the executive brief, right? Yes. So yes. there's the full version, 400 pages, uh, always published um, in May. Um, then um, there's a compact version, roughly 25 pages. But then we also do, as we also love charts, like you, Mike, we do yeah. monthly yeah. chart books, the so-called gold compass. Then we do two special chart books. And then we've got, you know, special publications like our gold beer ratio. We've got the gold iPhone ratio. And then there's, we're working on something new because I'm a big skier. We actually crunch the numbers, um, you know, um, because those um, ski passes, yeah, for, for the lifts, they're getting more and more expensive. So yeah. we researched how it actually um, your your purchasing power in ski resorts actually developed uh, owning some gold. And, you know, um, we haven't published yet, but I think the message is crystal clear. Um, it protected your purchasing power pretty well um, when you're a skier and you're saving in gold. So this is kind of the the range of our publications, it's all available for free as we've got premium partners that support us, that really want to, um, that, that really enjoy the, the, you know, the sober and um, also to some degree entertaining um, way that we analyze the gold market. And yeah, you can download everything totally for free. The new Mandarin edition of the In Gold We Trust report will be published next week. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you so much for this great presentation and analysis. And uh, we'll see you in the next video that we do. We should have Ronnie back in about a month. So thanks, Ron. Mike, thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Take care, my okay. friend.